And it is my privilege at this time, while we're yet standing, to introduce the speaker for this morning. Amen. I thank you and praise you for this woman of God. And you guys, I hope you are ready because every time she stands behind this pulpit, her pastor spirit comes out. Amen. Every time she stands behind this pulpit, you can see how submitted she is. You can see how faithful she is. You can see how diligent she is. Amen. I thank you and praise you for this young woman of God. Young woman of God, example, a pillar in this ministry, amen? It is my pleasure, my privilege to introduce to some and to present to others, Minister Chantel Allison, amen? Lord, let's give that praise to God this morning. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. While you guys are standing, Father God, I just ask, Father God, that you use me as your instrument this morning, Father God. I just give you praise, Father God, for your people that came in, Father God, everyone with the need, Father God, with the desire, Father God, to get something from you, Father God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you deliver it, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. Giving an honor to God and Pastor and First Lady in their in their absence, it's always a uh, very sobering and um, humbling experience. Amen. Whenever you have to deliver a word to God's people, because y'all God's people. Yeah. All right. I mean, I want you guys to think about that. Y'all God's people. Amen. Amen. God's people. People of the Most High. Amen. All right. Amen. And whenever Amen. He asks somebody to deliver something to His people. Yeah. It gotta be on. It gotta okay. be right. Yeah. It gotta yeah. be right. And that's an awesome responsibility, amen? Yeah. But I want you guys to think this morning about being an instrument. An instrument. How many of you guys know what an instrument is? It's like a piano, right? Or a piece of drums. Or if you take a little bit further, an instrument can be a pencil or a scalpel. It could be something that you use, okay. all right, to get something done. All right. And when I say, God, use me as an instrument, the instrument doesn't have thoughts for itself. The instrument just does what it's told or what it's guided to do. All right. It doesn't have any back talk. It doesn't have any thing within itself that it doesn't want to do it. It simply just does. It has no choice. Amen. When it's guided, it just moves. When the pencil is told to write or when you move your hand to write something with the pencil, the pencil writes. It doesn't stop. Amen. It's an instrument. All right, to get something across. And that's an awesome responsibility. Being an instrument for God is something that we pray for all the time. God, yeah. use me. God, yeah. use me. Yeah. God, I want to be used. Use me. Use me. Use me. Use me. But how many people want to be an instrument? Yeah. Because when you're an instrument, you're ridding yourself of yourself. And you're just saying, use me. Mold yeah. me. Guide me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There's a story that says, I am the clay, right? And God is the hands. He's molding me. He's making me. He smushes me back down when I need to be smushed back down. And he builds me back up when it's, time for it, when it's time for me to be built back up. And at the end of this process, we have something beautiful. We have something amazing. Amen. I came up here not too long ago and I told us about how we are diamonds. Amen? Amen. How each and every one of us are diamonds. I mean, brilliant diamonds, uh -huh. rare diamonds, flawless diamonds. Yeah. Ain't no mark, ain't no blemish on us, amen. We flawless, all right? How many flawless we got in the house? Flawless, okay? I'm talking flawless diamonds, amen. But in order to be a flawless diamond, there's a little bit of pressure that comes along with it. There's a little bit of pain that comes along with it, yet we're still diamonds, amen? And that's what we want to be. So I want to tell you guys a story. And um, stories about a girl, okay? This girl loved God. Oh, I mean, she, she loved God. Yeah. She loved God. She loved God to the point where she followed him. She was dedicated to him. She All gave right. to him. Yeah. I mean, she loved God. I mean, I mean, you could feel it when you were around her. She loved God. She did anything in her power that she could do. She had faith in God. Yeah. Okay? And what happens is, is when you have faith in God and when you love God, you start to believe things about yourself right. that you are capable of doing, the things that you can achieve because we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen? Amen. And she worked hard because she knew. She knew what God had in store for her. She knew that loving God meant that God had something for her. Amen? Okay. Amen. So God blessed her. 
He gave her vision for her life. He gave her favor. He gave her a family. He gave her a marriage. He gave her children. Amen. God is really blessing. Amen. And then she gets to a point in her life, despite all the love she has for God, despite how dedicated she was to God, despite how dedicated she was to his people, to his calling, to the vision, to the blessings. Amen. We all get to this point. Despite all of it, she got to a point where she didn't really know if God was still working in her life. Amen. On her behalf. Amen. Anybody ever felt like that? Amen. I know I love you, God. I'm right here and I know you have something for me. You bless me so much, but I get to a point where it's the blessings don't come as quickly as they used to. Amen. All right. Amen. The visions aren't coming as fast and as loose as they used to. Amen. I'm still on my knees. I'm still praying. I'm still faithful. I'm still dedicated. I still got this family that you blessed me with, but I'm starting to wonder. We still, we good. All right. We, we good. We on the same page. Is this just me in the house? So she came and she was wondering, is it, what's, what, what changed? What's different? What's going on? God, I need something. I need something. Her need becomes a little bit desperate because I can't stay here any longer. I've been in this situation for too long. I love what I have and I appreciate you for it, God. But is there anything else? Is there something else on the horizon? Are the blessings done? Will they continue to overtake me? What's going on now? Do I still walk in favor? Do I still have the blessings of the Lord on me? Do I still hear your voice as clearly as I want to? I mean, I got questions, God. What's going on? I appreciate the blessings. I appreciate what you've given to me, but God, I love you too much for this to be it. I've worked too hard for this to be it. I've dedicated too much of my life for this to be it. Has anybody ever felt that way in the house? Yes. Amen. Yes. So that's the girl, y'all. Do what you will with that, all right? We're going to move forward. She begins to ask God for things and the more you begin to ask God for things the more um, what you ask for begins to change right you start asking for different things at first we used to ask for the world because we knew that God was capable of giving us the whole world but it started to change well can I just get gas money can I just get a new job can I just get a new house I don't know about the world no more. It seems a little bit smaller. Can I just get Amen. this? Amen. Amen. What I want to talk to you guys today about is when you get in that situation, who brings you out? Who brings you out? How many of you guys know that God doesn't make tables? Anybody ever had a table that said made from God? God made this table? God did not make this podium, right? No. He didn't make the chairs. No. He didn't. He didn't make the furniture. No. He doesn't build houses. No. He doesn't personally employ people. Anybody's, anybody check written from God? <laughs> anybody? No. no, right? I just want to make sure I'm in the right house. I don't want to be around some spooky people. Who think, you know, I just, I just want to make sure we're in the right place. God doesn't personally employ people, does he? No. No? no. no. Did he build your house? No. No? no. Did he sew your clothes? No. But we got them, yeah. right? Yeah. But we got jobs, but we got tables, right? But we got clothes, but we got these things, right? Even though God didn't personally make them, right? Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm throwing this stuff out there because at the end you guys will understand. Hopefully that's my prayer. In 3 John, verse 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. And I remember Minister Erica came up and she did an amazing job breaking the scripture down. She said, God is saying, I love you. I love you. And I want these things for you, beloved. You are mine. I love you. But the most he can do for us in this situation is what? Wish. He said, beloved, I wish that you would have these things, right? right? I wish. 
above all things that you will prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. He's wishing it for us. He's not personally guaranteeing for us to prosper, is he? He's calling you beloved, which means you're a child of his. My child, I love you, but I'm wishing this for you because he's not personally guaranteeing it. He didn't personally guarantee for us to prosper right here, did he? Some of y'all are looking like, well, what you mean, God? So, what you mean salvation doesn't come with a personal guarantee for prosperity? Amen. And that's what some of us are waiting for. Amen. There's no personal guarantee. He didn't personally say, beloved, you go, I wish, him. he's not saying, beloved, I want above all things, you going to prosper. That's not what it says. Amen. You're going to be in health even as thy soul prosper. That's not what it says. It says, I wish. I wish because when Jesus came back and he died on the cross, the last word he said was, it's finished. My work here is done. After I get back up in three days, it's on you now. But not only is it on you, I'm going to send you another comforter, all right? I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to dwell in you, amen? amen. That's why we got tables. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit told somebody, you know what? I bet you should top that tree down. I bet you if you cut it up, I bet you it'll be more than just a tree. Amen. That's why we got furniture. Amen. amen. That's why we got tables. Amen. Because God gave somebody that thought. God is using somebody to give them things to make our lives better. Right? Amen. But what is God giving you to make your life better? Or are we still praying for tables? I wonder how many people in this room have been praying for things that God don't do. How many people have been praying for tables? How many people have been in here praying for God to build them a house? To build them a business? To change their job? How many people have been in here praying for that and God is praying for you? We're praying for a change. The girl is in here. She's praying for a change. She's dedicated. We're not talking about somebody that don't love God. We're not talking about unsaved folk. We're talking about his children. Children of the most high. And they're praying for a change. Amen. And God is praying for you to change. Come on. Wow. <clears throat> Philippians 4.13. I can do. Mm -hmm. I can do. Wow. You can do. Yeah. Chantel can do. Wow. Minister Peggy can do. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Amen. Alexis can do. Michaela can do. Amen. I can do. All things through Christ. Who strengthens me? This is not about Christ's strength. Because God said, you can do. You can do. You can do. So I wonder how many of us are living lives that we're not 100% happy with. And no matter how much we pray, no matter how much joy we try to get in the morning during prayer, we live in lives that we're not 100% happy with. And we're saying, God, fix it, please, Jesus. Fix it. We prayed for him to fix it. And God said, you fix it. I gave you the power. The Bible says, whatever you bind on earth, I will bind it in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose it in heaven. Whatever you allow, if you allow yourself to sit in this position and be unhappy despite everything I have already done for you. That's not on God. That's on you. Whatever you bond, whatever you say, not know what, I don't care what happens, this ain't going down in my life no more. I'm not going to wake up another day in any kind of unhappiness. I'm not going to do nothing else. Amen. It's not happening no more today. You say it. Come on. Amen. But if you don't, you're praying for God to do something that he's not going to do. God don't make tables. No. God don't make tables. He tells you how to make them. God don't give you businesses. He tells you how to do it. He gives you a man that prays so that he can tell you how to do it. Because when our frequency 
is often God is not communicating with us directly for every reason. He gave us him. He gave us pastor. He gave us first lady. Now they're communicating on his behalf. And we're still praying for tables. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Good, good. Wow. That was Matthew 18 and 18. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Wow. And in the book of John, John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He's coming to steal your word. God gave you a word. God gave you a word for your life. If he didn't, the pastor did. The devil is coming to steal that. He's coming to kill any hope that you have in your ability to act on what God has told you to do. He's coming to kill that. He does that by killing your self-esteem. He does that by doing the exact opposite of what Philippians said. I can do all things through Christ. But the enemy comes and says, you can't do that. Amen. You black. You can't do that. Amen. You ain't got no money. You can't do that. Amen. You can't go to school. You can't be an attorney. Wow. You can't buy a house. Wow. What's wrong with you? He's killing your belief in yourself because God's God not going to buy the house for you. Amen. All right? Amen. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And after he stole the word, after he's killed your um, self-esteem, after he's killed what you can do, he has destroyed your vision, he has destroyed your life, he has destroyed everything that God said that you could have. But then, you know, Jesus is always like, you know, I'll give you the bad stuff. And then he's like, but I'm here, right? Don't worry about all that, right? Because he said, but I'm here. I have come. That they might. That they might. Maybe. That they might. I have come that they might. That they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. That's not a guarantee. He didn't say, I'm coming so that you're for sure going to have life and you're for sure going to have it more abundantly. Right? That's up to you. Okay. The abundance yeah. of your life is up to you. I've come yeah. so you can have it. Right. I'm here so you can have it. But whether or not you act on it, on. that's up to you. Yeah. Wow. That you might. And I read that. And I was like, dang. After all that, that I might have it? Yeah. After all the fasting that I might have it? After all the time that I've given, I might have it? What? That don't make sense. After all the, the, the time I spent dedicated to God, loving God, dedicated to his people, I might have it? I wonder how many of us in here have been praying for tables. And we ain't got it yet. We've been praying for our life to be better. God, I need you to make it better. Whose job is that? God. How many of us have been praying for tables and then when we don't get the tables, we hide our heart from God? Because he's not listening to us. Because if he was listening, then he would have heard me when I said I needed it to be different. He would have heard me when I asked him for this table. I ain't got no table yet. How many, of got, how many of us have spent time praying for things that God is waiting for us to do? God is waiting for us to manifest these things. And when we don't see it, we hide ourselves from God. Because like the girl at the beginning, she doesn't, we don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand why I can't have these things. I don't understand why it's still the same. I don't understand. I don't understand. You wanted me to pray, I'm praying. You wanted me to be more dedicated, I'm more dedicated. You wanted me to give, I'm giving. I don't understand. 
and we and we sit back and we're looking at these things, but these are these are big deals. I know I'm not the only one that has been on my face crying to God because I didn't understand why. I know I'm not the only one who came home after service and fired up, and then Monday morning, oh, but I was on fire on Sunday. God moved mountains for me on Sunday. My faith was restored and renewed on Sunday, but I woke up Monday morning and it's still the same. It's still the same. It's still the same. How many of us are going to live our lives the same? When God told you you could have more. I'm wishing for you to have more. I came for you to have more. But whether or not you actually have it is up to you. Amen. Amen. Come on. Wow. Yeah. Amen. That you might have life. I wish for you to prosper. I wanted I wish more than anything in the world for you to prosper. But we're praying for God to make us a table. We're praying for God to build our house. But he doesn't do that. Here's what he does. Here's what he does. You grow up, and uh, some of our kids are very smart, very intuitive. They can look around at their life at four and five and say, something is very wrong with this picture. Okay? Amen. Or they can say, something is very right with this picture and I want above anything to recreate it. Right? Amen. Or they can say, something was wrong. No. Right? And they spend the better part of their lives either trying to recreate the picture, right? Or to paint another one. Wow. To recreate their lives. Right? You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. We've seen the things that we were true. We saw the things that turned us off in childhood. Yeah. And we saw the things that we really loved and had to recreate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Children do that. Four and five, before they can read, they make this picture up in their head. They know. Come on. Amen. And you know you can have more. Right? Amen. You have a parent, you come to church, you begin to develop a relationship with God for yourself, right? Amen. You get saved, you start praying, and you start saying, you know what? I've actually always been interested in culinary arts, I should probably go to cooking school. It's just a fleeting thought, right? It comes and it goes, right? It comes and it goes, it's quick. Then what happens? We go to work. We remember how much we hate our job. How, how much if she come and say one more word to me, I'ma have six back, she better leave me alone today. I'm not ready, you don't want it today. Cause it's not the day, right? We go back to the job we hate. Amen. Right? Amen. We go back to the family that's out of order. Amen. And we do it every day for the rest of our lives. We Christians, though. We saved. We get up and go to church every Sunday. We pay our tithes. When the man of God calls for an extra offering, we're third, fourth, fifth in line. We first. I'm here. I got you. We're saved. God's hand is on our life. He gives us vision. We got favor. And we go through this process for years, unhappy. And we don't and we don't know why we can't sustain joy. Wow. Amen. We don't know why we can't sustain our peace. Wow. We don't understand why we can be up on top of the world on Sunday, but Monday morning I walk back in my house and it's gone. We don't understand why. But just that quick, you see a sign for cooking school. I, I need to enroll in cooking school. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And then you meet somebody who says, you know what? I went to this cooking school. I got this job right after. All these people are in your way. All these people are in your line, reminding you of your destiny. That's how God works. That's how God works. He puts people in front of you. The man of God will tell you, you need to go back to school. That's not your career path. 
The man of God will tell you, you need to do this, you need to do this. This is how you get it, right? Amen. But what we do? Come on, go. We go back to work on Monday. Wow. To a job that we hate. Amen. And cooking school is on the back burner. Amen. God gave you that vision for a reason. Amen. He gave it to you. He put people in your path. He gave you a man of God that said start a business. He gave it to you. Amen. He showed you. He gave it to you. Amen. But we don't understand why it's not. But I don't understand. Amen. God, I want this business. God, give me this business. God, I know you said you're going to give me this business. Mm. Write it on the back of our envelopes. God, give me this business. You said you said I could have a business. I want the business. Where's the business? I don't. Where's Where's the business? Mm. God, I'm tired. I can't keep living like this. Come on. I can't keep waking up Monday to be sad. Come on. Tuesday to be sad. Yeah. I can't keep living like this, God. I know you have more for me. I can't keep doing it. I can't keep doing it. Where is my help at, God? Where is my relief at, God? Where is my joy at, God? Where is my business at, God? She got a business. She got a career. Where is mine at? And we praying. And it hurts. Because everybody... It seems like everywhere we look, somebody got something that we've been praying for. Amen. Why? Why? God, where's my change at? Did I not pray hard enough? We, we cool? I'm tripping. What do I need to do? Who do I need to call? You, oh, you're right. I need to read my Bible more. You're right. We read our Bible more. You're right. I gotta be nicer to people. I shouldn't have yelled at that lady. <laughs> You're right. You're right, God. I need to continue to pour into his people because it's not about me. You're right. We still ain't got no table. We still ain't got no business. We, we pray for it. We fasted for it. And before you know it, our heart get, begins to harden. We hide it. Amen. We hide it. Because God, you, you, why, how come I don't have it yet? Mm. I don't understand. I believe that the man of God came forth and said that I was going to open my business. I believe during prophecy service, the man of God told me something that was, the man, the man of God told me. Amen. He said it. He been calling me attorney since I was 11 years old, God. Do it, do it, do it. I ain't an attorney yet. What's going on? Yeah. I know that was you. I didn't make this up. I didn't choose the hardest career path on the face of the planet and decide to go to it. That wasn't me. That was you. We've been praying for this, fasting for this. The man of God told me I could have it. God told me I could have it. But if I don't, God not gonna take Delsa for me. He not. Amen. God not gonna write my college my college uh, uh, essay. He not gonna do it. Amen. God not gonna study for these classes for me. Yeah. That's my job. Amen. Amen. That's my job. Right. I gave you the tree. Your job is to make the table. Come on, I gave you the vision for the house. Yeah. Your job is to go buy it. I gave you the idea for the business. Go. Your job. It's finished. It's finished. Now go for it. Live. Go have life. Go have it more abundantly. Amen. God, God don't make tables. I'm sorry. God don't make tables. He doesn't build houses. He doesn't personally employ us. He doesn't open our businesses for us and kick us the keys. Amen. That's our job. Amen. That's, Amen. Our job. Amen. That's 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 our job. Amen.